What's Gucci, everybody? It's AJ here, and today I want to talk about AVL trees. But first, I want to tell everyone that I'm trying something new out in this video, and that in the description section below, I'm going to have annotations as to where I describe certain things in my video. So if you're watching this on a mobile device or just at home, you can easily navigate to different sections of my video and look up common common things that you may just want to know if you just want to know one thing, or just watch the whole video if you want to know everything. As I'm going to try to just make one video covering everything about my tutorial. So in this tutorial, I want to cover AVL trees. And AVL trees are another kind of self-balancing tree that um, try to um, make a tree more balanced and not let um, a usual binary tree disintegrate to linear time in terms of finding, inserting, and deletion of items. Now, an AVL tree usually you think AVL stands for something that's clever or such but really AVL is named after the two Russian mathematicians that invented it um, GM Adelson Velsky there's no way I said that right and EM Landis as it says in my book and they ju it was invented in 1962 and it just describes an overall balance of a binary search tree and a AVL tree allows the tree to never get out of balance or the height of the tree to never differ from more than to differ from more to get greater than one so to be um, two or greater and I'll show you how that is done now to move on to essentially the um, efficiency of the AVL tree um, because of the self balancing qualities of an AVL tree you can always ensure that deletion insertion and finding will always be log in time which is very good and what you want in a self balancing tree um, other than that it really doesn't have any other fine qualities to it it just rebalances a lot when you add and insert things so <clears throat> again so log n time always so it's always log in time even at, in its worst case which is very nice and basically a AVL tree is just a binary tree except it has different rules so I'm going to show you here so if you've watched my splay tree videos there is the zigzag and the um, zigzag rule that shows you that tells you what to do well in an AVL tree there's some different rules actually there's kind of less rules than a splay tree but I will show you how everything's done. So we're going to have the zig zig rule, and we're going to have the zig zag rule. Now, actually, they they both kind of help each other out. So in the zig zig rule, you need to do one rotation. You need to do one rotation about the parent to get a um a correct tree again. And in the zig zag rotation, you need to do a double rotation. Now, these rotations are what help is what helps formatting formats the tree and makes the height no bigger than one and what I mean by this is that let's say I have a tree where I insert five and then four and since four is less than five it goes to the left of four and then I insert three now the height of five on the left side is two but the right but the height on or the depth you can call it the height is zero on the right side. So it's two over here and it's zero over here. So this does not comply with the AVL tree rules because in an AVL tree, what we're gonna wanna do here is we want the height to be no bigger than one. So we want the height of all the nodes, no matter where what we take the height of, to be one or zero. So what we would do in this case is since we notice there is a zigzag pattern here, meaning it goes one way it goes the same way both times so it can either look like this or this so it can be right right or left left and um, what we're gonna do is all we need to do is we need to rotate the the child where the height the the node the parent node of where the the height is different than two we need to rotate that we need to rotate its child so we're gonna rotate four and what that does is it complete it completes our problem is it makes the tree balanced again according to the rules and so I make four the new root and I make five to the right child of it and three still the left child of four and there you go we have another balanced tree so that is the zig zig rule 
And zigzag is the easiest rule. And now if we have a zigzag rule, what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little bit different. Let me scroll down here. And I'll bring this down with me. And so a zigzag rule is if you have a node that goes right and then left. Basically, it switches directions. And, or if you have a node that goes right and then left, so and it switches directions. So yeah, it's going to look different than zigzag. So I, I feel this is a pretty easy way to think about things and see things there. So for instance, if I added five, if I added four first and then five, five is greater than four, so it goes to right. And then I added, um, ooh, that's not a good example. So then I added, let's make, let's say I added six, and then I added five. 5 is greater than 4 but less than 6, so it would go right here. Um, as I noticed, the left side has a height of 0 for the 4 node, and the right side has a height of 2, so I need to rebalance the tree. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, for a zigzag, I'm going to do a double rotation. So what I need to do is I need to rotate the grandchild with the child, so it becomes like this. So it becomes a zig, zig tree, I like to think about it, so I, I rotate those two just these two and I get a four five six tree oops so as you can see now I have it in, in a zigzag uh, kind of form and now I can rotate it to be a regular tree again so then I'd rotate it like I'd rotate in, in zigzag and focus on the just the child of what I'm trying to um, fix up and again now I'm going to get a balanced tree with five at the root six to the right and four to the left which is a working tree so that is pretty cool so now that you've seen the rotations I want to do a bigger example just so we can um, you can get a better handle on this so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go down again and I'm going to show you guys what to do so now I'm just gonna try to make a binary tree and show you how um, just a bigger example of what I just showed you so let's say I have a binary tree I have an ABL tree and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add five so I've got five right here and then I'm going to add ten and then I add ten the height there is no diff the height difference for any of the nodes is not two or greater than well since if the height is ever 2, you're going to reformat it, so the height will never be greater than 2. It will only be to get out of hand by 2, and then you'll reformat it. So that is something good to notice. And then I'm going to add 15. And now the height is out of order. So like the simple example I showed you, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate, I'm going to now rotate the 10 with, I'm going to rotate the 10 up, because that's what I want to do when it, since it's a zigzag formula. So since I did I, when you do zigzag, you want to just rotate the parent with the child. And so by doing that, I now have a new tree with 10 with 10 as the root and 5 as the right child and 15 as the, I mean, 5 as the left child and 15 as the right child. And then if I do zigzag, I want to rotate the grandchild with the child, and then I want to rotate that new rotation. I, after doing that rotation, I want to rotate the child with the parent. And so now that I have that, I'm going to insert 12. And just to further my example here, and I did not write anything there. And since now that I have 12, I'm going to insert 20. And now that I have 20, I'm going to insert 18. And 18 is greater than 10, 15, 20. But now, and 18 is now, um, sorry, oops. And put 18 right here. Now, if we check this tree, we will notice something. Ten, this, this, um, for 20, 20, the left node has a height of 1, and the right, the right side has a height of 0, so we're good there. For 15, um, the left side has a height of 1, and the right side has a height of 2, so the difference isn't bigger than 1, so we're good there. And then for 10, the maximum height has a height of 1, just the five and then but the right side has a maximum height of three see one two three so it goes down three nodes deep and 
now we have to now we know that 3 minus 1 is 2 or the absolute value is 2 and so now we know we have to reformat this so we know that at this 10 node this 10 node is what we're looking relative to that we need to you do this rotation from so what we want to do is we want to look at this 10 node right here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down the path to what I just inserted and see since I know that insertion is what co is going to cause me to reformat it but because before that I checked and I didn't have to reformat the tree that is what caused it so I need to see if I have a zigzag pattern or a zigzag pattern and since I have a zig since now I'm going down the tree I see that all I have to look is two nodes below I need to go two nodes deep into the insertion so I need to follow where the insertion is and since I can just follow it up the tree because as you see here the root node is pretty far away from this 18 but I still need to reformat it and what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna go I'm gonna go up and I'm going to go up and then see which nodes are crossed out and then go two down so I noticed that so 15 and 20 are the child and grandchilds I want to look at. So now that I've noticed this, what I'm gonna what I notice here is that I have a zig zig pattern. And with the zig zig pattern, what I can do now is I can analyze those and simply um, reformat the I can simply reformat the the um, tree. So what I know with the zigzag pattern is what I need to do is all I need to do is flip the child node with the parent node. So all I need to do is flip 15 and 10. Let's see if that works. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch, I'm going to put 15 is now going to become the root 2 because I'm rotating 15 up. By rotating 15 up, 10 is to the left of 15 and then 5 is brought down. So now, five, so now see 10 is now no longer the root node and now I have 20 right here oops I wrote 12 because I'm an idiot 20 and then I'm going to have and then I have since because 20 comes up with me when I rotate it and the 12 has to rotate over to this side because 12 is no longer less than the root it is greater it is 12 is now less than the root so it has to be on the left side essentially and there, I have 20 and then what's less than 20? 18. So now as you can see I've rotated the tree the way I wanted and I now have that tree and now I'm going to redraw that up here quickly. Maybe I should cut doing this, but you know, I kind of just love doing what I do. And this video is going to be maybe my longest video on YouTube so far. If you guys are watching this later, maybe it will not have been close to what the big longest video I've watched. Okay, so now I've got this new tree, and it fits the rules of the AVL tree. There's no point, there's no node in the tree where the greatest height of the left or right child's um, extends to be greater, two or greater, or just two. So now I'm going to continue with this binary tree to show you another example. And what, I'm, what am I going to do? I'm going to just simply add 19. So 19 is greater than 15, less than 20. So it'll go here, and it's greater than 18. So it goes to the right of the 18 node. And now what do we notice when we go up the tree? So how I like to do this, I should state, is that I like to go up the tree, and simply when I reach the root, I, need, I want to check the greatest heights. And if the, the difference is greater than 2, then I know I need to reformat the tree from that node. So, again, I go up to 18. The height of the right child is 1. The height of the left is 0, so I know I'm good. I go to 20. What's the height of the left side? It's 2. And what's the height of the right side? It's 0. So that is a red alarm, and I know I need to reformat. So now I know that I am in a zig-zag pattern. Change that right at the top right. And now that I'm in a zig-zag pattern, what I need to do is that I simply need to I need to rotate the child and the grandchild of what I'm rotating, which are 18 and 19 over here. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to reformat that branch to look like this. So I'm just going to draw that branch. So that's 20, and now I've got 19, and I've got 18. So I've essentially swapped them, but I rotated. But I'm I'm always I'm basically always rotating things up. So now I've got 19 rotating with 18, and now since I've done that. 
um, with zigzag I want to do the double rotation so rotate the grandchild and the child and now I rotate the child and the parent so now I rotate 19 and 20 and by bringing 19 up 20 is going to come down and now it's going to be as you see a nice tree here 19 20 and 18 so as you can see now now that I have that tree nicely now that I have that little portion of the tree simply um, formatted to the AVO rules, I can simply um, redraw my standard tree here since I didn't affect anything else. And I've got 15, 10. I accidentally drew another 15 here. That is okay though. I got 50, 10. Oh, I meant to draw 5 there. That's what I meant to do. 15, 10, and 12. And as you can see, now that is a perfect tree. Since not since the all the children have zero um, have zero children as well, or the bottommost nodes have zero children. So as you can see in this example, we use the zigzag pattern, and we use the zigzag pattern to show you how to perfectly format a tree and always make sure that a tree is formatting. So in conclusion, a VGL tree is great. Always log in time, and it's constantly updating. So you after you insert or delete something, you have to check every single time that you have properly done the right thing. And I hope you guys are having a great day. And stay Gucci, everybody. Remember, I remember that there are um, annotations in the comments below. Bye.